Nathaniel, firstly, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. A little, little bit tired. Um, it's been a busy few weeks, but yeah, I'm great. I can see why it has been a busy few weeks because uh, the, the press for It's a Sin just doesn't stop, does it? Oh, do you know what? We, do you know, we, th- we knew we were making something special, right? It was a Russell T. Davis script. You know, it's an honour to be involved in something in, in one of his productions. Um, and yeah, and we knew the story was really important and we knew it was going to be really important for the, for the LGBTQ community particularly. But none of us had any idea <clears throat> that it was going to make waves in the way that it has. Even Russell has been blindsided by it. And yeah, it just doesn't seem to stop. Everyone is talking about it. it's a sin, which is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And, and when you say make waves, um, it has certainly made waves. I, I looked at a statistic this morning um, from the Terence Higgins Trust. Um, more people have taken HIV tests this year than any other how mad yeah. is that? Yeah, I know. So so last week, the first week of February was National HIV Testing Week. And on the first day, they saw over 8,000 tests being booked through their site. And that's just one service. You know, that's not that's doesn't that's not representative of the whole, uh, you know, UK wide perspective. So that's incredible. And, and for myself as a HIV activist, I've never seen HIV being talked about so openly and so like honestly across the whole nation. Um, as a HIV activist, when you watch the series as a whole, because I'm guessing when you filmed it, you you kind of, I'm, I'm guessing you had an awareness of the story and what was going to happen, but you hadn't seen the full thing. So when you saw it as a whole, um, did you think it portrayed an accurate portrayal of HIV? Um, well, the thing is, it's a sin, it's a history. We've got to remember that. And it's also LGBT history. Month, so it's amazing to see um, a gay history uh, that they often go unwritten or unheard or unseen, you know, loudly and proudly centre stage, you know, on a national uh, t- TV channel. Um, it is, it's indicative of the time. And I've got friends who lived um, through the 1980s who were, you know, early HIV activists who fought for better healthcare, better treatment of, of people with HIV. And yeah, and sadly, it is very, very accurate um, and painfully so. And we, we knew that and I think for a lot of um, particularly for a lot of gay men or people who lost um, you know brothers sisters lovers at that time um, I think it's been a difficult watch but an important one because it's it's validated those experiences which we've not really dealt with as a nation yet I don't think we've really mm-hmm. grieved about HIV or about what that 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 epidemic and that pandemic meant in the early days so yeah really really accurate but for me who's someone who was diagnosed um, in 2003 the, you know, the, the story is very, very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, this series, essentially, what I would call it, I would call it a historical drama because, you know, this is in the past, but there's a lot of people living who, who grew up through this. And I think a lot of people are sort of bewildered by that fact that this was actually happening not that long ago. It kind of, did you have the same feelings towards it? Um, I mean, it's, it's astonishing how, how accurate it actually is. You know, Russell did a lot of research and I know a lot of people who Russell interviewed um, and I know their stories. In fact, the character of Jill, um, the, the person that's based on, is played the, the, the mum of Jill in the show is the real Jill. Mm-hmm. So she actually gets a chance to have a cameo in the, in the show. And there's, you know, there's, there's thousands of people like Jill up and down the country who stepped in at that time and supported, you know, uh, people who were dying. Um, I think as well, you know, there's, there's, there's elements in the story. There's a reference to um, Monsal Hospital and someone being forcibly detained. Well, I actually know a friend of that person. So, you know, so this history is is still alive and, 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 and living. And um, I guess so, some people have likened it to that, po- that point after the Second World War, where f- about 40 years afterwards, people wanted to talk about it because obviously people who had lived through it were getting older. You know, some people were, were passing on, dying. So actually, Russell's has likened it a little, little bit to that, that our community now is sort of ready to or needs to talk about this thing and needs to get it out. Um, so I think it's been a really important um, drama, you know, uh, a historical moment in time. Mm-hmm. I find it funny how you mentioned Jill there, um, because I had a chat with the real Jill Nolder last <laughs> week. So I was just like, my, my whole life has been It's a Sin for the past couple of weeks. Um, She's it's a sin. wonderful. She is such a wonderful uh, lady with amazing stories as well. Mm. She's Welsh. <laughs> she is, yeah. <laughs> she is. <laughs> Represent. Um, yeah. Um, Nathaniel, it's a sin. It's been uh, critically acclaimed. People are loving this show, not just for the fact that, you know, there is a strong representation of HIV, but the characters themselves. People are loving the characters themselves. So let's go right back to the beginning. How did you 
get involved in the series? <laughs> I got involved in the series. So I, um, I have a solo show about my own life story. So I was diagnosed with HIV when I was 16. Um, <clears throat> I didn't tell anyone for about 15 years. I had, um, I kept it mostly secret. And then I had um, a bit of a mental breakdown and I decided I wanted to go on this journey to go public with my diagnosis. So I made a show called First Time. Now that was on tour. Um, well, actually, we were, we were going up to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2019. I was really cheeky. I knew Russell was making this show, so I sent him a, I sent him a message on Instagram and said, I want you to come and see my show. Now, as it transpires, he couldn't come to see my show, but he said, let's go for a coffee. So I found myself sat in front of Russell T. Davis in a coffee shop in Manchester, like, what is my life? Thinking, yeah. just a bizarre, <laughs> you know, an amazing experience. And we had an amazing, really long chat. He was so gracious. He listened to my story and he told me about the show. And then he sent his producer to come and see my show and then I got invited to audition you know I still had to audition I still you know like everyone else um, and I auditioned and I, I got offered the part of Donald as a result of that so to any aspiring actors out there be a bit bolshy sometimes it gets you it gets your places what, what is it they call you in the show is it is it Isla Isla Sinclair, Isla Sinclair. Uh, yeah, what, Isla what, Sinclair. Was, what was that like hearing that they call you that <laughs> Well, yeah, I think I think it's funnier for for Ollie Alexander, who is his character is likened to uh, Larry Grayson, who was married to Viola Sinclair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned Ollie Alexander there. What was it like working with him slash all the other amazing cast members? <sighs> Honestly, when my agent called me to say you've got got the job, I was I mean, obviously I was a me I was bowled over got the job, and then I looked at the cast list and I was like, what? The <laughs> it's just like name after name after name, you know, powerhouse performer. And um, I was really excited to work with, with Ollie, um, big fan of years and years, you know, and and him as an activist as well and what he stands for and speaks for in our community as well, which is great. <clears throat> Obviously very nervous to start with, but we got on really, really well. Um, and yeah, it was, it was amazing, an honor, like I say, an honor to work with so many amazing, talented people. Yeah, a complete honour. Um, and um, kind of just finally, uh, Nathaniel, um, HIV itself, kind of to somebody who has no idea, to somebody who has literally been living in a, under a box, you know, after after not watching it to sin, um, what is HIV? So HIV is a virus, human immunodeficiency virus, um, and left untreated, HIV can cause complications and death. Um, so people might have heard of the term AIDS. We don't really use that anymore in the UK. Um, most people don't develop AIDS. Um, HIV is completely treatable and manageable. Um, I take one tablet a day. Um, it has no side effects um, and my HIV is managed. It's, it's what's called um, undetectable, uh, which means the, the level of HIV in my blood is very, very low. And that means I'm untransmittable, which means I can't pass it on. So I can't pass HIV on to my, my HIV negative boyfriend, for instance, um, and that's scientifically proven. Um, so yeah, HIV is completely different to what you see in It's a Sin. That's the early part of the epidemic. Um, but it, the psychological impact of living with HIV can be huge. You know, the stigma and the discrimination around HIV is still massive. Um, and that's obviously uh, a hang up from what we see in It's a Sin. Um, and so I always say to people, you know, it's not something you want to go shopping for. But if you do get it, um, you are going to be, you know, you're going to lead, lead a happy, healthy life. Mm -hmm. To anyone who has watched It's a Sin, to anyone who, like me, has binge watched it, loved it, watched it every week, however you want to watch it, um, what would you say to them? Uh, a, a message of thanks. What would you like to say to them who have actually <laughs> well, <tuned in? laughs> I'd say thank you for watching. And then I say go and get tested because, you know, we're still we talk about coronavirus pandemic, but actually we're still in the HIV pandemic. Um, you know, globally, 35 to 37 million people have died from HIV and 38 million people live with it. And that figure is still going up and in the UK as well. So the epidemic isn't over. Um, so it's really important now. There's, a, there's an aim to end HIV by 2030 or end new transmissions by 2030 in the UK. And that means everyone who's sexually active needs to go and get tested. So book a test. Um, yeah, that's what I'd say. Amazing. Um, Nathaniel, thank you so much for having a chat with me. Congratulations on the series. I can't wait to see what you've got coming up next. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>